Okay, hi guys, welcome to the channel. So, I thought today I'll share how do I create an infinity loop video. Um, instead of me going through a lot of nonsense and explaining the theory about anything, I'm just gonna take you through it. And hopefully you learn something on the way. Okay, so this is started. With the journey to create an image, we first have to prompt the AI using a forward slash imagine. So we're gonna go with forward slash imagine. And you'll notice the first one propped up. And then in the prompt box, we're gonna put what we want. So like I said, we're making a motivational video. So we're gonna go with a realistic med meditation out of the world landscape with a horse in the foreground. So now we got a picture. We are about to upscale them and change the background. But the first thing we do, once we get our first image, we're gonna click on it. And then we're gonna look at it. We like it. We click zoom out times two. So at this point, we're just waiting for our picture to render so we can take one. I think I'm gonna go with number two. I like what's about to be out here. So let's change the terrain. So I'm going with the little terrain that's starting after this little lake that the monkey is sitting with. We're gonna go on custom zoom, start two times zoom. At this point, we're gonna put in some, we're gonna replace everything here up until aspect ratio we're gonna keep in. I'm trying not to move too much because I'm pretty sure my chair is squeaky. Yeah, yeah, listen, listen. How is this chair so loud? And I'm pretty sure because the way it's it, I've never noticed this. And it's weird, but okay. Again, we're just gonna do a couple of uh, generations of this. So far we have a monk sitting, meditating on the edge of a forest, looking at his little temple. Then we pull out into this little alien landscape. It pulls out into a, another monk sitting on a green luscious land in his um, meditation. And now we're gonna pull out into another like area and then hopefully we're gonna put into another monk on this one onwards so we're gonna see now we will go through and save all the images into our folder before we take it over into our next application okay so we're gonna open the image that we want to reuse we're gonna open in browser okay so that's our first one opened next to this one then i'd like to just remove it from the browser keep it on the screen go back into your discord open the next one on the list so if we go through the next one which would be this one open in browser you'll notice it opens next to this one so now you got your first two images okay before you save you just keep doing that go, go through the whole list and then we'll take it from there so guys i'm going to upscale my images before i put it into davinci and make the infinity loop I click on the image to put it onto the, the page i right click on it and then i say place back around I do this for all 11 images before we're going to download them. Okay, we can handle this, aren't we? Two left. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. okay, guys. So once you have all your images in into the different pages on Canva, um, we don't actually have to name them anything at this point. We just need to put them in the right order. I put them in the right order specifically because when you do download them, they're going to be renamed to one, two, three, four in terms of the page numbers. And it helps with the sequencing when we go into the print sheet as well. So you have to do it this way. I'm just saying it helps me. If you do happen to make them in the wrong order, all you can do is just move them up. So now it's the right order. So, so once we have all our images, we're going to click on share. We're going to click on download. And then we're going to go and make the PNG as big as humanly possible. Keep the background and just say download all 11 pages. And then it's going to download under mobile your story. And we're just waiting for the download. Cool. If you're like me, um, your download will come in the zip folder, which you'll right click on your PC. I don't use anything else. I'm just using the 7 zip. I say extract files. It says you want it in your download folder. I say OK. And then it extracts it. You'll notice a folder with the same name I then double click into it and then I'll have all my images that's been upscaled using an in number sequence. So now I know number one is the first one, second one is number two, and we don't have to worry about that later on. So cool. Okay, so once you open um, DaVinci Resolve, the first thing you're going to have to do is create a new project. So we're going to say new project, we're going to call it um, uh, creation. Infinity loop. Okay, so I'm just gonna take you to the basics of creating this. I'm not an expert in DaVinci Resolve. I'm just using the uh, latest one. It's free to use, easy to download, and it's very fun to play around with. So the first thing you notice is at the bottom of the screen, you have these little tabs, media, cut, edit, fusion, color, um, fairlight, uh, deliver. We don't need any of these. 
all we really care about is two things number one the edit screen and the deliver screen for this purpose we're going to go to the edit screen and you'll get this fancy screen that has a little um, box up on the side we want to open the inspector on the side so click inspector it'll open this little side thing and then we can make this window a little small on top so we can see um, our stuff at the bottom here and we have no media clip at this point so to get media in you can either press ctrl i on your keyboard or you can click on file import media and you can see nexus is also ctrl i so if you click on it you'll now get um, access to your media images which are going to my downloads i will then find the folder we were using oops not the right one you see you need to make sure it shows the numbers so we get the right sequencing we can take them all and click open so once you have your images inside of um, davinci resolve it's now all about putting it in the right formatting and then turning it into a infinity loop so how we'll go about doing that is as follows number one i will highlight all the pictures in my master um, um, import section so okay on top i'll then drag it over into the video window you'll notice that video one popped up so we'll just put it down quickly there cool so now we have all our images next to video one so once we have all of them we're going to select them all by just um, dragging all of them you'll notice we get a red border so we're going to highlight all of them so we have all 11 highlighted we're now going to right click on any one of them go to change clip duration or you could have pressed ctrl d but let's click on click on it you get this little window that popped up here at the front first oops let me just do it again um so you'll notice there's a window that popped up it says change clip duration we're going to make that from five seconds to two seconds we can say change and you'll notice that all the all of your images change to two seconds instead of five seconds on the timeline okay if you're still with me we're doing great now i'm going to remove the spaces in between all of it by just clicking clicking the space when it becomes light gray i press delete on the keyboard so clicking on that and then we're going to remove all the spaces between the images once we have all the images um in the right time line so two seconds long next to each other in the right sequence we're just going to highlight them again and then we're going to go into the top right remember i said we have to open inspector so now we have inspector open once we have inspector open we're going to click here for the zoom you'll notice there's one we're just going to click on it we're going to change it to a two press enter on our keyboard and then all the images will be twice as zoomed in so you'll notice that they are now zoomed into it <clears throat> At this point, you can now unselect all the images, click on the first one again. So only the first one is going to be have a red border around it. Make sure that this red line thing is at the front of the first one. And then when you see on top, it says transform to two, this diamonds, click the first one that's setting a keyframe. So now that you've set a keyframe, which basically means that you are said that um, I've not zoomed the pitching times two, and I would like the picture to start at that exact process you're going to go to the end of the picture you're going to put another keyframe down so this you're going to say again i want it to end at this point but now we want it to go back to the original size so instead of two we can change this back to a one so that means at the start of the image from our first key keyframe it should be on two times zoom by the time we get to our end of our keyframe so again at the same block is selected the lines at the end of the block we have kicked the thing and now it says zoom one you'll notice you have now the zoom effect okay so now we're going to do the same thing for the rest of the images you can just copy this and then you can select all the other images you can either press alt and v on your keyboard or you can right click and come to where it says face attributes you click face attributes you click video attributes and you click apply that will now allow you to have this video effect going through all your images. So if I click play, you'll just quickly see that we have this little um, zoom effect happening already. Now you will notice that on the side, it's filling in the screen. And that's just because of two things. Number one, um, on this window at the front of us, we are not using full screen, which is using 34%. If I change it, for example, to, to actual size, you'll get something like this, which is hard to look at on the screen while we're in edit mode. Um, but essentially, it just means that on the mobile screen, it's going to fill up. So don't worry so much about that. Okay. So once you have your images in order, you have your flow, you're basically done. So once you have your flow, 
you have your keyframes and everything is in order you're then going to highlight all of them again you're then going to right click on them and turn them into a new compound clip okay well, the reason for this is because then we can change the direction of the clip with a simple click of a button i'm going to show you how so once we say new compound clip we can just leave it for name the name like that for now we say create now at this point we're going to take the bar at the end of the infinity loop or at the end of, of, of the first loop we're going to copy um, the first one that we made. The bar has to be at the end because wherever we paste, it's going to paste from the right hand side of this um, red bar. So we're going to put the, the bar at the end of it. We're going to click Control V or we're going to click a right click Paste. Okay. Now we're going to have another image. Again, the bar moved at the end. I'm just going to put back to the start of this one quickly. And then you'll notice we have two now. So once we have two, the idea is to take the second one, go down to um, Speed Change. And then you'll notice you can change the direction of the second one. So I'll make sure you highlighted it. It's red. Click on the direction change. Now we have two. We have one going in and one going out. So now you have an infinity loop. And what I like to do just for the sake of making it feel like there's different um, speeds involved, you can go around and mess with the speed under duration. So for example, if you just do instead of minus 100, because we're going um, backwards, we're going to go minus... Um, 500 maybe you can see where that takes us so quite fast and then it gives us like the zoom effect back in which i think is kind of cool so at this point we now created our first compound clip we duplicated it and then we changed the direction and the speed to give us this effect of it coming back in with a, like a quick um, pullback so there's nothing else on your timeline and you have your single clip ready you go to your, to your deliver screen at this point you can just rename it whatever you want to i'm just going to call it monk meta MIDI and then you pick the location you want. I'm going to put it in the same folder that we were using to create this whole experiment. And then I am going to click add render queue on the bottom right, left hand side. This will then allow us to look at the top right hand side, which will show that we now have a video ready or job ready to be rendered. At this point, we click render all on the, in the middle right hand side of the screen or right middle. You can see it. <laughs> and that will then start our project. At this point, the video is now done. And we could go watch it if we want to. Media Monk. Just gonna open on a browser, and this is why I would look on the piece or on, on the cell phone, so to say. Okay, so at this point we have created images in the journey. We have gone to DaVinci Resolve to create Infinity Loop, and now we're back in Canva to quickly put it together. Um, again, you can use other applications you're more familiar with. I'm just using Canva since I'm paying for it, and there is some stock footage and elements I want to use in here. So what I usually do is I come into the search bar, and I'll just type in something like Reel, which will give me the Instagram Reel on template. At that point, it's just for a mobile size, right? I'll go down here, and I'll just click on Blank Template, which will open a blank new screen for me in Canva. On the top, I'll give it a name. So I'll just call it again, um, Monk Meditation Loop or um, yeah, Meditation Loop. And then we will then start adding our images into it. So again, we'll go to Uploads. We'll go into Upload Files. And then we'll go find the, box, um, the download folder that we were using. And we'll find the video that we wanted to use. Okay, so we'll take the video. Um, we don't need any other, other elements since we're not really going to use it anymore. We just need the one video. Then, while we're waiting for the video to upload, we can also think about what type of music and words we want to see on the screen at this point. Um, maybe we don't go with words. Maybe we just go with a meditation. Or if we want to give it actual words, what we're going to do is we're going to go into ChatGPT. And then we're just going to ask it to give us a quick 30 second breathing meditation. It says, narrator says, welcome to the 30 second breathing meditation. But you get the point, right? So now we're going to move over into um, Canva and we're going to create the video. Our videos are uploaded. We're going to put it on the screen. We're then going to set video as background. And then you'll notice we have an infinity loop video. And look how nice it looks. It doesn't touch the screen, doesn't sketch because it's meant for the mobile screen. Right? We started in the beginning with the right sizes, and now we have an infinity video about a monk on different planets 
uh, meditating and taking us through a psychedelic experience. So in total, we have 26 seconds worth of footage. So we need 26 seconds worth of audio. Maybe I click on the element screen. Obviously, you can just go to audio on top. You can type in meditation, meditation um, music, or just meditation um, music. Zen actually made more sense. What is Zen? Um, let's listen one that. I'm going to put it here at the bottom of it. And then if we click play. Welcome to this 30 second breathing meditation. Let's begin. Take a deep breath in. And exhale slowly. Feel the calmness wash over you. Inhale positivity. Exhale any stress or tension and carry this peace with you. <laughs> 